Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Emily Pfeiffer. She's with the University of Kentucky Extension Plant Pathologist there. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Joanna. Now, we're going to continue talking about tobacco today, mm -hmm. and but we're going to switch gears a little bit. The other day we talked about black shank, which seems like part of our conversation every year, but here lately, frog eye and target spots also been part of the conversation. Right, so frog eye leaf spot and target spot are both fungal leaf spots. They're caused by true fungi and so we do have foliar fungicides that are effective against those diseases. Um, and in the recent past, they've been getting worse and worse and worse. Part of this is because of frequent rainstorms during the summer. Um, you know, those pop-up storms that all of a sudden we just get an inch in, say, an afternoon. Um, and so that, that has a hand in the worsening severity of those fungal leaf spots. But we've all, also, in the recent... In, in recent years, we've documented that there's resistance to um, a commonly used fungicide, as oxystrobin, um, or that's the active ingredient in quadrus, um, in the frog eye leaf spot pathogen. And so on some farms, it seems as though um, as oxystrobin, that fungicide is not, is not as effective as it once was against frog eye leaf spot, but it's still very effective against target spot. So, so let's talk about the difference okay. between the two, like if noticeable difference between frog eye and target spot. Right, so frog, both, both diseases start in the lower canopy. Mm -hmm. and that's where you're gonna see the first spots. Frog eye leaf spots though look very different from target spots. So frog eye leaf spots tend to stay smaller, um, about the size of a pencil eraser, maybe just a little bit bigger than that, certainly not bigger than a quarter. Um, where target spots, they get much, much bigger. The color of the spots is different too. So frog eye leaf spots are surrounded by a yellow halo. Um, and then there's like a reddish brown ring. And then the center of the spot is tan to parchment colored. Under high humidity, you can even see black specks in the very center of that tan to white um, part of the frog eye spot that's totally different from target spot. So target spot is pretty much uniformly brown. Um, when you look at it, um, you can see concentric rings. That's how it gets its name because it looks like it's got kind of a target appearance. And target spots can get really, really big. Um, over the course of the season, um, and with a little bit of rough weather, the centers of target spots can fall out. If you get a target spot close to the leaf petiole, which is what connects the, the leaf to the stem, you'll lose that entire leaf. And so historically, target spot has been more of the yield limiting disease, mm -hmm. and frog eye leaf spot is more of like a quality, a quality limiting disease. And you know, Emily, for the past two years, probably I've seen the worst frog eye mm -hmm. that I've ever seen in my career. Right. But it seems like this year, it's not as bad. Right, so the leaf spots are kind of spotty this year. Um, <laughs> intended, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and that's directly associated with our weather patterns. Okay. And so if we get, if, if one farm gets a heavy rainstorm and then a farm a few miles away, they miss, that rainstorm misses them, it's likely that the farm that, the, that got the rain is going to have heavier disease pressure than the one that didn't. There are other factors that are still involved. I mean, one thing that I noticed this year is that farms with really heavy weed pressure seem to have a little bit more frog eye than ones that had better control over their weeds. Um, you know, farms that maybe they mistimed their fungicide application, they may have a little bit more of the fungal leaf spots than ones that were right on target. And so for frog eye and target spot, we really do, we recommend getting an azoxystrobin application out there about three to four weeks after setting. So the plants have, have started establishing, but they're not taller than knee high. And the reason we recommend around in that, in that time period is because the plants are still small enough that we can be sure that we're getting good fungicide coverage mm -hmm. on the leaves. Basically that that fungicide is getting where it needs to be to do its best job for us. And you know, a lot of times when we have tobacco production meetings, we talk about the entire package, getting a good variety, your soil has to right. be right, you have to have this good management practice. Uh, it's kind of a complete package. 
And when one of those are missing, we can't, we just can't leave them out because we never know about weather and things like that. So. Right, right. That's the one thing we can't control. And so taking steps to control what you can puts you in the best spot at All the right. end of the year. Well, thanks for the information, certainly. And if you have questions, make sure to give us a call. We appreciate you watching and hope you have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.